I step into the day with the dawn ringing in my ears. Oh, well, I turn to my TV show. No better way, I gotta get myself into gear. Let's go. Oh, and I feel good. Welcome back. This is your Thursday edition of your midday dose of espresso. Get ready to feel inspired and motivated and probably a little humbled today. We are joined in studio by the phenomenal Kat Ngala, who is showing us it's never too early to start building your empire. She is incredible, holding three international pageant titles, hosting a youth chat TV show, and owning a modeling agency is all quite an accomplishment. But doing that and a whole lot more, all by the tender age of just 20, is no easy feat and we just have to pick the brain of this multi-pageant title holding TV presenting acting businesswoman <laughs> Kat uh, welcome to the show Great, thank you so much uh, nice to have your your life summated in one paragraph <gasps> eh? um, I hope I left nothing out because you've achieved a huge amount for someone at your age you started early. Yes. At age 12, yes. you took the first step into the world of pageantry, mm -hmm. if you will. What prompted you to do that? And was it everything that it was cracked up to be? What did you expect when you went into that world? Sure. So, you know, um, growing up, I was a tomboy. You know, at really? school, I was the only girl on the soccer team. I was just that tomboy. And I saw, I saw Celeste Kumalo, who was Miss Teen South Africa 2011, you know. Um, and I saw a YouTube video. And I was like, whoa, okay, this pageant thing it looks cool mind you in my family pageant was a very foreign thing there was no pageant queen so when I told my parents that I want to do a pageant they were like a what like is that <laughs> soccer but like ha, what is that exactly you know um, I told them I wanted to get into pageants I had the entry forms like filled up like all you need to do is pay but everything is done you know and my first pageant I always make reference to this because it was funny I didn't have the proper training, you know, my hair was looking all cutie, I didn't have the proper dress, but then I was that fortunate, you know, person to get scouted, to be like, hey, actually, you have potential. There's something Let there. me train yeah. you, and like they say, the rest is history. Um, there was clearly a spark, and as someone, yeah. I was there, I was laughing with you, I was there at, at the origination of, of Miss SAT, <laughs> so um, I, yeah. I know how empowering the pageantry yeah. process can be. We paint it with a brush mm -hmm. that we see from like a Hollywood or an American slant, but in the South African context, it isn't that and it yeah. opens doors and it gives you confidence in your case enough confidence to go and get onto TV to mm -hmm. start presenting on Yo TV if I'm if I'm not mistaken yes. and that's where you kind of discovered a whole nother arm to what you can do Definitely. what was that process like going on to national TV at such a young age you were 16 years yeah, old I was 16 so I think with um, the pageantry process you know everyone first enters to you know it's the it's the crown it's the it's the dresses and I never say to people like don't feel bad for saying you entered pageants because it looked pretty you know like don't be like oh what's the confidence and because you are going to build into that into that confidence stage so for me at first it was the crown and the dresses because it looked cool but then as I entered more pageantry I, like pageants I thought that way this is actually a fulfilling thing I can have that philanthropy side of it as well as empower myself and at the same time there is so much confidence that's actually being instilled in me and you know obviously people were like you have the voice TV 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 and I was like TV um, okay tried it out went to presenting school and I remember for the longest time you know I w wasn't getting any castings for any advert whatsoever so with your TV it was like is this going to be just another will call you back and then you don't call me back <laughs> and I remember just going into the audition thinking that I've entered pageants and all those you know skills and things that, that I've told the judges about that confidence literally you can change the world let me actually apply those to my it's audition gotta to it's bear. gotta come mm. to bear and I literally went into that audition with the most confidence and said you know what I am giving them the best version of cat it's either they're going to take it or leave it and when I got that call that I'm a presenter till this day I really thought I was dreaming I was like yo TV as in like snack attack as in PO 16 Marvel like what so it was very exciting for me and yeah 
And the rest is history, as they say, because <laughs> yes, it's engaged. Yes. And I think the joy of being in TV and mm. what, what I often try to relate to people is that it puts you in this nexus where you're exposed to so many opportunities. Definitely. So many connections. Oh, definitely. Your network mm. is massive and hugely powerful. So we fast forward now. You are the current CEO and director of Miss Teenager South Africa and Miss Teenager Africa yes. pageants. What is it that you're wanting to instill in other young women? Why have you made this such a, a fundamental part of your mm. life? So I was very excited, um, you know, when we actually got offered that um, pageant because I was like, this is finally the chance to make South African pageants in what I really believe that they should be. You know, a lot of the times we have such, you know, national pageants where girls are just told to pay a certain entry fee, come with this particular dress, go. You know, and I feel like they are just thrown into this big pool of sharks where they're like, what do I do? How do I walk? How do I talk? And that's not what national pageants, you know, the least are supposed to be about. They're supposed to be literally empowering. If that we if yeah. we are going to call pageantry, you know, beauty with the purpose, then what kind of purpose is your organization serving to girls? So with my, so with Miss Teenager South Africa, the first thing I said is that before any girl goes on stage, we are going to have a mentorship program. Brilliant. And so far, we are hitting all eight provinces. We have the most amazing girls because I feel like it's unfair. Girls come from different background, some no pageants, some don't know pageants. So let us all train them the same and give them a fair opportunity. So we are done with our mentorship programs. They are trained by the best of the best. Next uh, month is actually the finals wow. of the pageant. So we are looking forward to, the, to it. The girls have worked extremely hard. It's been a difficult year. Nonetheless, we are just seeing each and every single month these girls come out with such confidence because they trained and they guided and they do have that support to actually call someone from the organization to be like, Kat, I'm not so sure on this. I'm going to an interview. How should I conduct the interview? How should I prepare? What should I wear? They have that confidence to literally go out yeah. and be confident to say, I'm a Miss Teenager South Africa finalist. So before they even get the crown, it's all about, you know, treating yourself as a finalist, knowing that as a finalist, alone that difference you can make and that is what I actually wanted the pageant to be about and it's almost I know ultimately everyone wants to be a winner but Obviously, it means that yes, uh, you're through yes, the process regardless yes. of where they come out at the end of mm. it they've all grown they've all been activated if you will absolutely love that now of course you've shifted gears because you've got to got to create an empire you've got to secure the bag <laughs> yes. so we want to make our money girl uh, KN International Model Academy mm -hmm. now this is the latest kind of string to your bow um, as an entrepreneur what has that process been like? Sure. So actually, people are just like, wow, when did you start this? Like, when did you think about it? And I've actually been, you know, working on this for four years wow. because I wanted to create a school. We wanted the curriculum to literally be on par so that we know that when the girls leave our academy, you know, or after they're done with the course, then they are really equipped with everything and anything that they need to go out into the industry, you know. So we are not only limiting it to pageants as such, it's modeling it's grooming, Get a job. Yeah. it's pageantry, you know, it's going to an uh, uh, interview. How are you going to conduct yourself? CV, what are you going to dress? There's so much that actually I learned from pageants that have prepared me for the real world. But the fact is not everyone wants to do a pageant, you know. So hence we have the modeling and the grooming aspect of it so that like whatever industry you go into, you are you can put prepared. your best foot forward. Yes. I love the word, the fact that you said the word grooming because mm -hmm. just looking at you, I mean, you are gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm going to ask because I know there would be a lot of young women out there wanting some key grooming tips. So I'm going to give you a moment to think about that and we're going to get into some uh, key critical grooming advice for you cats. Always looks uh, polished and well put <laughs> together so while we have her with us she is going to share some of her top tips to keep your grooming at its a game don't stray too far
Welcome back to the midday broadcast of your Feel Good Breakfast show that's now turning this whole day into one big Feel Good party. Participating in the world of pageants since the age of just 12 and appearing on national TV regularly since the age of 16, Kat Nkala is sure to have picked up industry tricks and tips that are the reason why she always looks and today looks just too polished and ready to strut her stuff and she's about to give us her five essential tips for grooming. Stop what you're doing, get a little <laughs> bit of a pen and paper, yes. press record, whatever you need to do to get this done. I've got to ask straight off the bat because you look gorgeous. Yes. You're a bit of a scene stealer. Who are you wearing today? So today I am wearing a beautiful outfit made by Keleto, right? So this is an ostrich skirt, I must what? say. It is the heaviest <laughs> piece of item I've probably ever had in my life. You're burning and calories I as you like walk. I feel like him so. and I really, he, his clothes speak to my personality. Everything is just so over the top, dramatic. It's all just cat. So yes. I love you. it. There's something vintage about it, but it's very contemporary as well. It's Thank beautiful. You. Absolutely amazing. So, I mean, you've probably got a hundred tips that you could uh, depart to, yes, to, to young women out there, but let's, let's focus on five okay. fail safe tips that you rely on to keep yourself looking and feeling, I mm -hmm. suppose, as part of the, the dynamic as well groomed as you are. Give us the first one. Right. So the first one is H2O is the way to go. And I know that probably in every video that you see, they're always like drink water. Drink and water, drink water. we literally mean it to drink water. Don't forget that our bodies are actually made up of 70% of water. So so, you know, if you're not drinking it, then where is your body getting it from? So it's important to drink water. Um, I don't even think it needs a further explanation because in terms of hair, in terms of skin, in terms of just being healthy, very, very important. And for my friends at home that maybe they're like, but it doesn't taste nice, then mix it up with fruits, strawberry, lemon, mint, blueberries, mix it up with fruits to just give it that extra taste. Just do it for yourself, man. Our brains need it. Yes. Even while we sleep, everything functions on it. Yes. So this one um, you gave mm -hmm. us and I'm dying to know what it is. Okay. The Cinderella trick. All right, what is that? Cinderella trick, right? Have you ever had that moment? You probably haven't, but... <laughs> <laughs> you never for, know. For my, for my girlfriends, right? When they have lipstick on and, and then, you know, you're just like, oh, you got a little bit of lipstick on your teeth. What do you do? How do you avoid that, right? So I call it the Cinderella trick. It's okay. putting your finger in your mouth and just like popping it out. You'll see that lipstick literally covers your finger. And after that, lipstick is removed from like the round of your uh, mouth and it can't go on your teeth anymore. But now people are like, okay, cool tip, but why Cinderella, right? Why, why Cinderella? Now, Graham, tell me this. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Have you ever heard of Cinderella looking shabby? Wait, before the fairy godmother comes? But after? After, no, never. Never. Have you ever been like Cinderella, like her wee was not laid down properly? No, never. There was a stain on her dress. Never gonna happen. Did Cinderella ever have lipstick on her teeth? She never had a bad day. Mm -mm. So I called it the Cinderella, Cinderella trick. trick. <laughs> well, and you're a living Cinderella, so I get that, man. I love that. Um, this one made me laugh because I struggled with really bad acne when I was I was a, a teenager yes. myself. Don't pop the pimples. Don't pop the pimples. So I know at some stage in our lives, we all go through like a breakout, especially when seasons are changing. It's just like, what's going on with my skin? And you know, you'll get a few pimples here or there. And the first thing that, you know, anyone wants to do is just like to pop it. Yeah. Don't pop the pimple because it is literally de detrimental to your skin. It leaves that scar on your skin. So do not do it. It will go with time. It will go and you shall get your glowing skin back. Let, let the body do what it let does. Let the body do what it does. PJs are the new daytime. <laughs> Hello, guys. <laughs> so this is for everyone that's just like, I woke up like this. That is literally me. So the whole of Instagram. That's really. like, I woke <laughs> up like this and PJs really, they are the new daytime. There are these cool silk PJs that if you go to my Instagram, I think every week, like I just have a picture in my, sil in, like, my silk P PJs <laughs> because really they are the most <laughs> comfortable and you just pop them on with a sneaker or a heel and people are like, are those PJs? Girl. Like, girl. Yeah, the silk does does help, but I feel PJs you. PJs are the new daytime. And, and I like the fact that you've got to be authentic. If you're going to put it on yes. Insta, make it real, man. Make yes. it real. Okay, our final tip, and this one I certainly endorse from my side, but I'd like to hear your perspective. Coconut oil makes the best primer. Definitely. So I'm sure you've heard that, you know, there's a lot of primers and everything, but coconut oil makes the best primer, especially for, you know, girls and makeup. Before you put your foundation on, if you want it to literally stay on, really? coconut oil 
oil is the way to go. Now, this is something that is really inexpensive. You can get it from even like, you know, anywhere. Comes in a small bottle, just put some coconut oil and your makeup will stay the whole day. It won't melt, even when you sweat. That's it's literally crazy. a matter of it dabbing. That's it. That is insane. And there are a lot of makeup companies out there going like, no, don't tell her that. You must buy our primer. Um, and it also has all sorts of other health benefits as, uh, yes. as well. I've picked up some absolute gems. Some of them I won't use. Or maybe if I get dressed up one day and I need the Cinderella trick, I might try it. Um, she can do just about anything else, but can she cook? We're going to find out in just a moment if she can whip up something scrumptious for me and this big studio crew of owls in our kitchen. We're going to welcome her into the Espresso Kitchen in just a moment to whip up some delicious gourmet hot dogs that's all on the way Join us this Sunday at 12 midday as multi-platinum musician Zahara takes us on a journey back to her roots in the Eastern Cape. See how two entrepreneurs from Kayalicha are bringing cycling to the people. And escape on a romantic getaway to Umschlanga with celebrity couple JR and Tepi Wundler. That's the Insider Essay this Sunday at 12 midday only on SABC3. Welcome back. We're now in the kitchen with multi-pageant title holder, TV presenter, actress, and phenomenal young businesswoman, Kat Ntala, who is going to show us a scrumptious gourmet hot dog recipe. Yes. Um, which I, I'm loving at the juxtapositioning of your gorgeous outfit okay. with the hot dogs. Mm -hmm. This is like a marriage made in heaven. <laughs> Um, and I love the fact that you you are putting yourself out like because we, when we invite our guests, we're like you got to cook for us, okay? Yeah. And this is cool. I love a hot dog. So what what's going on here? All right, so obviously we have our hot dog, our uh, sausages, the dogs, yeah. <laughs> the dogs, the dogs. We have um, some coriander. We have mustard seeds. We have some salt. We have some diced up cucumber. Of course, our peppers mm. and nice grilled hot dogs. So now this is actually the secret to the, like the gourmet in it, right? Okay. Usually we just take a bun and that's nice. it. But Quite, yeah. Butter it inside and literally just let it like grill ah. for a bit. Yeah. And I think especially if you can have a lot of sauce on so it doesn't get all soggy, kind of make do you it like understand? Burn. I love that. All I right. love that. So all you right. can you can do what you're gonna do, man. Okay, get, cool. Get cracking. I know we're And you're just gonna stand there? I, I'm gonna. I was thinking about eating all of these, yeah. um, but I thought that might be a little bit rude. But I'll, I'll get involved in whatever way I can. So okay, you, cool. 
just let me know. Are you, do you come from a long line of, of course, I know your mom has been a massive influence in, in your life in so many areas. Are, you know, do you follow that trend? Graham, as you said at the top of the show, that I was very busy <laughs> <laughs> as a teen, so I didn't get time to cook. But my mom has always, you know, it didn't even matter. The day I came back from Miss Teen World, I had won the title. She still made me do the dishes. I Good still girl. had to do my chores. Cinderella, so, yo. <laughs> my mom really, she has played a huge role um, in really becoming the person I am today. She's an entrepreneur herself. She's a commissioner. And oh, wow. one of the biggest things that she taught me is that as long as you have hands, feet, and you can talk and you have the ability to secure the bag, you have no reason whatsoever to just be chilling. So um, when I was in grade four, I actually opened a fashion business at school, right? And of I was, course you did. Of I course was, you did. I was yeah. employing students. Like, I was like, what do you want to be? You know, they were like, okay, I can be the sketch artist. I can be this. I can be that. And then it got to a point where now my positions were filled up. And friends were fighting. Like, but I went to CAD first. So I was like, wait. Let me just solve these positions. Don't fight. <laughs> Highest bidder. And next thing, the day... Um, I had to go into the principal's office and my parents were there and they were like, we understand, but... How do they, how you do they call do you out for that though? I mean, how do they call you out? Literally, man? kids were going to their parents saying, I need 200 rand. I need 100 <laughs> rand. And the parents were like, for what? Like, for Cat's Fashion School. Like, hello, I am the new sketch artist. So, really, every chance that my parents get to tell that story, they do. Like, everywhere they're just like, yeah, Cat, but remember... This is, you made yeah. us go to your school, you were called into the principal's office. And I mean, the school, they had to obviously reprimand me because I couldn't do that in school. But my principal kind of applauded me. He was I'm, like, sure he's, I'm sure he's watching now. He and was it's like, like, smart, like smart. over the moon. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where, where is this all going very quickly? Where do you want to see the empire go? Sure, wow. Um, the biggest thing for me is that I need to see the difference that I've made in people's lives. You know, that fulfillment, every single time I get someone that comes up to me that's like cat i saw you on blue couch on monday and you were speaking about exam tips and it worked and i'm always just like whoa i forget that people actually watch people me people are on the other end yeah <laughs> people are on the other end i'm just always thinking i'm talking to a camera you know and i forget so for me it's that for, it's that fulfillment and it's what they're going to gain you know i want people to be like because of kn like this happened that happened so definitely i really want to play a role when it comes to you know people's dreams and, and become like insanely wealthy, surely. Yeah. I want to become like my mom, though, funny enough, hey? Like my mom. Who uh -uh, super woman, like my mom. Mm -mm. And I can see the attitude coming out oh, as well there. That my it's, mom. This comes with a bit like, of spice. For me, she's just very inspiring. I mean, she started off with a recruitment company, right? Um, and she always says that when she got her degree, she was working at a retail store, packing literally clothes on, yeah. on shelves. But she was like, because I have a degree, I couldn't have been like, I need that job. She was like, I had hands. I had to go make money. And obviously, her recruitment company became a huge success. But I mean, at the age of 44, she was like, actually, let me switch things up and go to law school. Now, I never saw my mom as a lawyer ever. So for us, it was very like weird. Graham, I'm going to need help with this. You can do it, man. Can I? I? No doubt. All right. Is it, is it <laughs> uh, where are we here? Let's get this. Let's just get that. Aha. Uh -huh. You see, when you hear that, clunk, 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 it? then you know it's happening. There we go. Yes. Teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, now that your, your mom has kind of seen mm. your vision coming together and what you're trying to mm -hmm. achieve, how does she feel, do you think, about the woman that you're becoming? She's very proud. Very, very proud. But as much as she's my number one supporter, she's also my number one critique, if I can say. <laughs> and the thing is that I have to understand is that my mom was always going to be on my team. She never wants to see me fail she's in or your corner, lose yeah. it, anything. So even if she tells me that maybe she should have done it like this, I know that it's all like in good faith. Now, last week, I had the screenings for KN in Joburg. And my mom and my dad, for some awkward reason, they were not saying anything about it. Like, they were not helping. And I was, like, thinking, wow. Sink or swim, girl. Do, wow. Yeah. And I never asked her why. And then she came to the screening, and she was like, actually, I wanted to see if you could pull this off by yourself. And I am extremely proud. Because it was literally my sister and I, and I kept saying, why are they not saying anything? They're not even asking me anything. What's going on? They have oh my faith, gosh. And sister, my mom literally said, faith. I wanted to see if you guys could pull this off. And like, 
and you have, man. So I'm going to well let you done. finish up there. I've been right. so inspired. I think 2020 has encouraged all of us to rise to the challenge. What an example we're seeing right now. And as an organization with a mission to propel African designers and their work to global markets, as well as connect consumers with authentic African stories, it's no wonder that African Fashion International is going above and beyond with the upcoming 2020 Fashion Week Joburg Virtual Experience. We've been talking about it a lot on the show. The front row is open to everyone for this year's virtual experiences from the 12th to the 14th of November with the main shows going live on the Friday and the Saturday evenings at a quarter past seven. And you can sign up to watch for free at www.afi.events. Please go and do it with us. African designers reset, reimagine and reinvent the best in fashion. You've inspired me this morning. Oh, thank you so much, Kat, for just being this wonderful um, energy that you are and for doing what you're doing for other young girls out there. I'm going to eat this with absolute relish, but you go and conquer the world. You secure that bag. <laughs> secure the bag. Secure the bag. So all of you, thank you so much for joining us. This has been an amazing show. I'm going to sink my teeth into these babies right now. Mm. Another feel-good production.